I want to show you a way to use the step sequencer, but also bring in more samples. If you have samples, I'll show you how to load them in to this drum machine designer here. We can open up the DMD here, our drum machine designer, and that's going to give us these pads, right? And we can scroll to the right here and you see all these empty slots. There's even some empty slots on the second page. We can drag in samples here. So that's one way to do it. We can also just start an empty drum machine designer and start from, from scratch. Why don't we do that? So I'm going to open up a new software instrument track and I'm going to go down to drum machine designer. And now I have an empty drum machine designer and all these empty pads. So here's where I can exactly like I would do with the, the stock logic library. I can uh, drag in like any samples I want in here. I'm just going to do the same thing with my own samples that I got from the internet. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's just close down the library by pressing Y and we'll move this over here and we'll press F and that will open up our file browser on the right side. So you can kind of think of it like right side is the stuff you have in your computer and then the left side there the library is like stuff that's available in logic. So this is just like a finder window. Um, you can go home and go to anywhere where your samples are located. Here's some kick samples and I'll just go to the kicks, choose one you like so you can scroll through them. Okay, choose one you like, drag it in, put it on a pad. And now we have the signal here, we can change the root key, we can also change how the signal is treated. Um, there's lots of stuff we could do, we'll get into in a second. But the, the idea is you can just bring any old samples you have on your computer and drag them in here, and then we can edit them inside this sampler, and then we can play them uh, with our MIDI keyboard or with the step sequencer or with regular drawing MIDI notes in. That's how we would go about it. Let's just bring in a snap, uh, snare clap, bring in that snare clap, and then we'll bring in a crash here. So we have a kick, a snare, and a crash. You can press F to just get that stuff out of the way on the side. And now I can go, let's just mute this original step sequencer. Same thing, now that we have all the samples here, we'll press E, and we can go to the step sequencer, and you'll notice like we don't have many instruments, just the samples we had. So we have a kick, snare, kick, snare, 64, and now we split into two different windows. So crash, kick, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, kick, something like, and we just take that crash off. We now can go back to 16th notes. The idea is if we want to bring more samples in, we just open our drum machine designer, drag in the samples in, and here is where we would want to edit the root key. So if our song is in C sharp, we'd want to make sure we root note these to C sharp. So we got the clap in C sharp. Let's go to our crash. We want to make sure that's in C sharp and just clicking and dragging up in our kick classic view G sharp zero. So we want to go to C sharp zero and that's going to tune it down a bit. And so that's important to have your instruments in key and you can do that within the drum machine designer. If you add a new element in crash in, for example, okay, add the new crash in, let's tune it up down to C sharp. And then if we go to our step sequencer, we don't see it right away. We'll have to go to this plus sign to kit pieces and then add this new element we've added. And then we have the new crash or whatever element you, you've added there. The other way I work with samples is dragging pieces of audio in and then just having them actually in the, the view here as regions. And we'll get into dragging these types of samples and then editing the tempo and pitch of um, samples that you need to adjust to make it sound good with your song.